right spot and I didn't even have to adjust you. What, what an amazing day. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I truly appreciate it. And I, I want to talk about what you do because uh, what you and my wife do are, are similar, but I don't think, but you own the company. So, uh, but yeah, please tell us about Real Brave Audio and uh, what you do. Yeah. Well, uh, Real Brave is a, it's a music school and uh, doing it for about 20 years. Luckily, I don't teach anymore. <laughs> And I could just concentrate on growing the business. But yeah, we, we do online lessons. Uh, we've got our own software that is different than pretty much any offer that's out there. Like you log into our website. You have like something like this actually mm. there yeah. where you can take your lessons live one to one with a real person. <laughs> and uh, it's really awesome. Like I've never seen anything like it um, really really proud of it and um we're nationwide not worldwide nationwide and uh it's it's really a it's it's really a, a pleasure to come to work and do something you love yeah especially you know you're putting your time and ed energy into educating people and, and and you know brightening people's life with music i think that's a very honorable thing to sort of throw yourself into yeah, well, prior to that, I was being a musician, so and, and no one gave a gave a damn about that. No, uh, they don't care. Do nice they? Have people listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> you you do have music out. Uh, we, we were playing that at the beginning of the of the show, and and it's pretty cool. We we dig it here. Uh, we, we, let's start with. Um, well, actually, I I, I want to stick with Real Brave for a second. We'll go back in a second because. My wife, uh, she works for a company called Take Lessons. Have you are you f um, familiar with TakeLessons.com? Yeah, they're on our radar. <laughs> yes, they they is they should right because uh, they have a similar thing going on. W have you looked into the company at all? Do you know much about them? Oh yeah, okay. oh yeah, I know all about them. <laughs> of uh, course. <laughs> no, when you say your wife works for them. Do you the, mean that she's a teacher or she works for the company? I'm sorry. I should actually rephrase that. She's actually a partner with TakeLessons.com. She, uh, she teaches on the platform, but she also writes curriculum. And she, she's been, um, she's been part of their like ad campaigns where like you could buy a ukulele and because my wife teaches voice lessons and ukulele, uh, which is very popular as you know, uh, very. <laughs> Uh, and, and in the box on the tag is like, um, get free lessons with take lessons and it's her face playing a ukulele. So she's very, very involved in the company. But, um, after, uh, Microsoft, uh, acquired the company, yeah. she's kind of taking a, a, kind of taking a step back because it's a monolith company now. <laughs> and it's, it, and I'm not here to disparage take lessons at all because it's, it's been good to our family. It's been good to my wife, but what are some like fundamental differences that separate a company like take lessons and a company like real brave that's all offering similar services? That's uh, that's such a great question. And I, I'm so psyched that there's this synergy because mm. you're going to kind of understand what I'm saying uh, potentially. Right. Mm, absolutely. Uh, and congrats on the, I mean, the buyout's huge. Yeah. Well, I mean, we didn't get any of that. So, oh, well, right out loud. <laughs> we, we didn't get none of that. But, but she, but again, they've been nice. They've been good to us. Okay. <laughs> the fundamental difference between a big corporation trying to teach the masses mm. is the individualized uh, attention. Um, so, it's one thing, and your, your wife aside, right? But let's say they take lessons, must have thousands of teachers right and um most of those instructors after doing this for 20 years are well-meaning but self-focused so when they go to the site they're not going to utilize all the tools that they have on the take lessons uh, software mm. and they're going to leverage like what they know and you know sometimes in an online setting that'll work sometimes not Actually, I would say more times not, and that's just my experience talking. So with with us, we've got about 60 instructors and everybody is certified and they know how to use the program and they know how to leverage it so that it'll get people to learn. They're using all the features. They know how to use it. There's customer service there that helps them. 
So even though, I mean, we're not like large by any means, you know, upwards of a thousand students, but we're not small in the sense of like a mom and pop. Right. So like we're in that middle ground where, you know, it, we're, we're getting more students, we're helping more people, and it becomes a little bit more difficult to give that ind individualized approach and to guarantee like people are going to be using the, the software. But I would say that that's probably somewhere in the ballpark, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. And actually to sort of, uh, to sort of tag onto that, you, you, they do have a core curriculum again, which my wife wrote, uh, the voice voice curriculum for it. But what I did notice once they started opening the floodgates and, and expanding the company is that they allow anybody to teach on the platform. And when I mean, anybody, I mean, anybody, <laughs> anybody <laughs> and so again yeah. i'm not trying to disparage take lessons because again they're they're a great company and they've been good to my family no, but disparage. <laughs> let's do it come on let's shit on these by the way no um <laughs> Yeah, and, and I got friends who are in the corporate end of that too so i'm not trying to shit on anybody but and, and i love them but but i mean this is an open criticism that i would tell them to their face um, as somebody who's been involved with this company, because they've been involved with the podcast too, um, and uh, you know, when they when we first came into contact with them, they were a small company based out of San Diego. Uh, my yep. wife knew the the CEO and had a personal relationship with uh, you know everybody, and you know, once they sold to Microsoft, you sort of saw a little bit of a watering down of. Uh, uh, of the instructors and you know there's been lots of drama that uh, my wife has stayed out of but has witnessed from the sidelines people trying to defraud the company people trying yep. you know so it opened up um this floodgate of of just not un un not un not uneducated but just people who i wouldn't say is qualified to teach anybody anything so you know uh, I, I like what you're saying when you're saying that we have a core curriculum and we have our teachers who are certified and we know these right. people and they are, you know, like these are vetted people. Um, and, 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 you know, a way that Take Lessons sort of uh, uh, tries to circumvent that is the rating system, right? Like, so all the instructors have, you know, a, a five up to five star rating wow. and the more ratings they get and the more, um, you know, comments they get, you know, the more the profile rises. So, you know, they're trying to sort of circumvent that, um, the, the educators that might not be up to snuff, um, but it's not a perfect system. So I, I no. don't go ahead, please. No, I mean, I was just going to say, um, in so, what you're, what you're talking about is, uh, on the outside looking in is something that I would suspect from a company like that because they're so big and <laughs> it's this is happening uh, across the board across the nation really for mm -hmm. most people that do what i do right or what your wife does ever since the pandemic there has been a plethora of people quitting their jobs or starting online teaching and it's watered down the quality because then it makes it almost like a commodity. Yeah. After 20 years of doing this, right? We know, like, I know it works. And I used to be a musician. So, like, um, if I start boring you with facts, <laughs> we could start getting back into music. Yeah. But I've seen tens of thousands of people walk through the doors, though, because we have physical locations, too. Mm. And um, I've seen lot, lots of stuff online. You cannot replace uh, quality with like a five-star metric. Mm. Quality comes from actual results. And I would bet, I'm not a betting person, but I would bet a lot of the people that take lessons with take lessons or any online service, don't they don't stay very long. They probably stay a month on average. Mm. And we're seeing six months on average. Wow. And that's down from three years ago, which was a year plus. So like retention is actually one of the biggest issues right now, I think in a lot of different industries. And um, 
it, it would have to do with the quality of the lessons. Your your wife is probably phenomenal, mm. right? So they've they've got this top tier lesson talent, mm. and then now they're letting in everybody. Well, that's gonna muddy the waters. And if for anybody out there that's listening, you're looking to take online lessons. I mean, don't just take it from me. Like, do your research, but don't look at the five star rating as everything because you really have to see the quality of the content and you want to see how they leverage an online lesson. That's why we built this platform because it's made for online lessons. So like it's, it's way more intuitive than you think. Uh, but teaching online is not intuitive. Yeah. Well, yeah, there, that, that is a challenge, right? Like that, what, what were some of the challenges? Because I, I'm guessing that you guys switched during the pandemic from in-person to online. Um, I'm just assuming, but I don't, I don't like that's, to assume. That's the correct assumption. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so, ah, oh, shit, I lost my train of thought. That was stupid. Uh, no, no, we were, <laughs> we're going somewhere with this. Um, I, I, I literally forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. We were on the, the verge of massive growth in 2019. Mm. Okay. When I say massive, like, you know, for a, a schmuck from Queens, New York, <laughs> uh, to open another location with an investor, massive. Like, mm. I don't have a college degree. Again, schmuck from Queens, New York. Uh, I got uh, some money from an investor and they, we wanted to open 10 locations. I opened my own separate location outside uh, of the one we currently have. So we had three locations in 2019. I was set for 10 more, actually nine more, nine more to open. Oh. Pandemic hits. And ironically, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I wasn't as happy as you'd think I'd be like when, you know, all the stories about people, they get the money for like a, an investment and then they open like their dream business. And it's all like, you look at the social media, they're having like a great time. No, it sucks, man. <laughs> it was a lot of work yeah. and I was not happy. And when the, when March of 2020 hit and I saw the writing on the wall and I was like, you know what? I can't live my life like this. We need to switch gears. So, um, you know, it, it wasn't a blessing back then because it was still very stressful, but seeing how online required um, less money up front, I'll put it to you like this, like take lessons. I'm sure they use like Amazon for their, or like some sort of online service. Yeah. It cost me $70 to put a, a student in a seat in a location. It cost me $1 <laughs> to put a seat online. Mm. That's how significant Wow. Uh, the, the cost differences. So I was like, when I saw that and I saw a couple of markets opening up, such as like the homeschool market and uh, some new kind of online virtual school markets, it's like, man, this, this could actually work. And so far it is. Yeah. And then, so what were the, the challenges that you saw switching from physical in person lessons to a platform you know an online platform what was some of the challenges of um you know with actually communicating and you know and educating your students um to yeah well let's just start there what, yeah what you... it's still happening it's education of your staff yeah wow. on how to use the tools mm -hmm. uh we've got we built like a scoring system, not like a star scoring system, yeah. like the take lessons thing you're talking about, but like right. really intuitive and that's in that intuitive is the wrong word. Um, thorough scoring of how like people that work here use the site. And in the beginning, it was like they would log on for the lesson and then they wouldn't use any of the tools. Mm. We train them, we coach them, we train them, we coach them. We, like we constantly do it. We'd have months where we would like go through another training round. Um, but it's amazing how people don't follow rules. <laughs> uh, so we had to go back to the drawing board. We built this, this system and weekly meetings, and now everybody uses it about 80%. Mm. You know, it's not perfect, but I, I, I'm telling you, man, like if, if I were to get into like the, the offices of some of these companies to find out whether or not people actually use their systems, I, I would be shocked if they had 80% usage. I really would. Yeah. I, and, um, you know, I, I could definitely probably confirm that just, <laughs> just by knowing and knowing like, you know, the insider baseball of what's kind of going on over there. Just, yeah. 
it, you know, it, it, again, we're not talking about people who've been highly trained. Uh, we're talking about people who all of a sudden said, I know how to, I know yoga. I'm just going to start teaching yoga. And then, you know, here they are teaching yoga on this online platform. And who knows if people are getting hurt at home? Who knows if they have the right technique? Who knows any of that crap? They're just doing them. And, and so, yeah, it, it has kind of gotten watered down and it, it, it is, uh, there are some issues, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's good to see that you guys are, are very focused on, um, you know, making sure that whenever a student log, logs on, they're at least in front of somebody who knows the platform that they're using, because that's important, right? And then also is, is uh, you know, trained and educated to educate others, which is, is huge. Um, and I imagine that's kind of a, a hard thing to manage on its own uh, to, to train people. Are, are you, you do like Skype trainings or however you guys do it, or is it a lot of in-person? How do you manage that? Since we have the physical locations, we'll have meetings. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any buddy working from home right now. Mm -hmm. So everybody's uh, in at the studio working. Ah. That's a whole separate story. That was very difficult to get people to come back to I work. Bet. <laughs> it was unbelievably difficult. I was, you know, you ever heard of the um, that whole? Uh, I forget what they call it, but the um, the employee like mass like leaving of jobs in the 2020, yes. 2020 year. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was a victim of that too. Oh, wow. So like people were just like, I can't come in. I'm, <laughs> I've made a whole life about around being home and working from home, which, which, you know, uh, that's understandable to me. I get that aspect. Um, but you know, you, you, even the, you know, even, you know, saw Twitter before Elon came through, you saw Microsoft, you saw, and it's still a problem, right? Like these huge top tier uh, yeah. Fortune 500 companies are, are still dealing with it. And then the interesting other part about it is the real estate, right? The commercial real estate is, is sort of suffering from that as well. So oh, yeah. there's like, it, it kind of threw a wrench in a lot of, a lot of uh, business, this whole pandemic situation. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know where you're located, but we're in the New Jersey, New York area. And uh, uh, where, where are you guys located? I'm in Toledo, Ohio. Oh yeah. You're in the <laughs> middle, smack middle of America. You're right yeah, in that. That that ass crack of America right there. Yeah, yeah, just the deep in that ass crack of America. <laughs> I, I I actually moved back from well, I moved back here. I grew up here, but I actually lived in San Diego for about fifteen years, and that's where I met my wife, and that's how she got involved with take lessons, and we got involved with take lessons and such. So, uh -huh. so it, coming back here was a uh, it was quite a change, but uh, yeah, I was out in Cincinnati. Um, for the online thing that we do and uh, promoting it. And like, it's, it's, it was, I like Cincinnati. It yeah. Cool. Since he's beautiful. I like Cincinnati too. I'm not a fan of Toledo, but <laughs> you know, home is home is a state of mind, I guess. That's, that's so funny. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, like, I don't, I don't know how, I'm sorry. Like I derailed that, but that's um, fine. I, I, I wanted to get back to the, uh, the, the format, like online lessons and like, and like getting people to use it. Sure. I was reading this thing about Jeff Bezos uh, recently. It's he's got a new book out, um, and Walter Isaacson, who did the Elon Musk um, profile uh, and biography, did the the forward, and he talked about how um, say what you want about Bezos, like we could have a conversation, good, bad, and different. But I was shocked. I didn't know this. He started. I knew he started the company in his garage, and I knew he got a hundred thousand dollar loan from his parents, who weren't necessarily rich at the time and some of his own money. But in the very beginning, they would pack all the stuff themselves mm. and they would be on the floor, you know, packing, 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 sending stuff out. And what that did is it created a culture of um, making sure that every customer was taken care of in a very, like, very specific way. And over the years that has gotten lost mm. because the company has gotten so massive. Now they have the same, uh, they call it like a value set. Like when you have a company, you have a value set and the same values. And from the corporate point of view, yeah, like, yeah, but you want to make sure every single customer is taken care of, but then they're forgetting like way down the line, there's people making $22 an hour working 60 hours a week, 
you know, struggling. Right. So I, my point is, is that in a company like Take Lessons, School of Rock, uh, School of Rock is more of a franchise, but they, th it's hard to keep those values going yeah. uh, because you've got investors and bottom line people that it's just looking at those numbers. Uh, so we're in a good situation, I think, for growth. Like we're still small enough to to figure this out, and there's millions of people that are looking to le learn online. Um, and we've got we've got a, a not a stranglehold, but like you know, we've got our eyes on every lesson room, and we understand like what needs to happen to to really help people. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Like, it's, it, there's nothing better than seeing somebody like learn how to play. Yeah, absolutely. Responsible for it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. It's a, it, it seems fulfilling. And, um, you know, like, it, it seems like you would be open to expand and take in investors. Uh, how would you handle that? How would you try to, how would you maintain? I, I, I know it's hard, almost impossible to answer, but it. Oh, it, I can answer it. Okay. Well, I mean, how would you maintain, you know, growth and exponential growth? but also try to maintain those core values, which Amazon has seemingly lost. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can argue that they've, they've lost some of that because mm -hmm. they've lost their people. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it comes down to um, community. And I know that that's corny, but like, it really <laughs> okay. is truly, you, you've got to have people that believe in what you do. I do. And um, if you, once you, once that community stops at a certain level, and people don't believe in what you're doing and they're just like there for a paycheck that becomes a barrier for growth so like mm -hmm. we're so dependent on instructors it would be difficult for us uh at our like if we didn't have money like we would need money in order to scale like mm -hmm. that would be a thing now getting money is a different story because then you're in bed with all those people and they're all you know, farting under the covers. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, cooks in the kitchen, man. Yeah, man. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Um, the, the guys that uh, helped invest, if they, you know, they're they're wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And uh, but like, yeah, you're diff there's different values there, and you have to make sure that the people, if you get Microsoft in on mm -hmm. your investment, what's the bottom line? Well, it's going to be growth. Yeah. And you're going to sacrifice probably from like a customer service point of view and a quality point of view. They got like, they got a ton of money, man. Like, um, take lessons. It wasn't like, it wasn't a couple bucks. It was oh, yeah. serious venture cash. Like mm -hmm. that was money, like F you money to grow as much as they could. And they dominate the market. Yeah. And that's what they did. They're top on all searches. They're top. And all uh, social, as far as like categories, as far as like you know, uh, pushing some content out there, and it's it's significant. But like to bring it back to our level and to anybody else out there that's trying to do this, you have a, a core management team that believes in what you're doing, staying consistent, because cons I always believe that consistency is power. Uh, consistent on your message and like consistent on management and consistent on hiring, hiring the, the quality and caliber of people that are, are great. Um, and the list goes on and on, but it's, it's that kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Yeah. Do you contract uh, your employees or do they? Work? Oh, big pet peeve. Um, <laughs> I was told about 15 years ago, my accountant, who I love dearly, uh, he said to me, he's like, listen, we started hiring people like big time like 17 years ago 15 years ago it was starting to get up there like we would i was still teaching them he's like listen in reality these are employees and uh we're in new york so new york new jersey too big time penalties for uh misclassification i was like all right well how bad could it be well it's 15 percent tax mm. oh so, wow. yes <laughs> i mean it adds up over time that's crazy yeah man so so I did it and we're still, they're still all employees. And uh, I've been in meetings with like the governor of New Jersey about this topic because there's plenty of businesses that misuse uh, misclassification. And meanwhile, we're like subsidizing, 
you know, all the state stuff and the federal stuff ourselves. And it shouldn't be that way. We got to level the playing field. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> that's a, that's a whole other thing. No, I, I, I like that, man. I like that you're not, you know, that, that you actually employ your people and, and you offer insurance, I, I imagine. We can, you but can. The, the thing is, it's going to be so expensive. Right. So like when we do a, a cost comparison, if someone's making $600 a week, believe it or not, in some cases can still apply for the state uh, benefits mm. and get a better deal wow. than what we would offer on a private plan. Right. Um, I've never seen a situation where it's been that way. Like we have better rates. Like it's, it's always like there's people that are making 25,000 cause they're working part-time, you know, and they've got maybe another job or they're like, a, you know, a musician, mm. they make 25,000 working 15 hours a week. And yeah, like they'll get benefits through the state program that are like killer, man. Yeah. Like I could never get that type of stuff. <laughs> their, their their payments like fifteen dollars a month. Mm. Their co pays are zero. Zero, yeah. <laughs> it's no, like, I mean, here's the thing too. I mean, if you're working at Real Brave Audio part time and you are also basically a contractor who's playing out in music, there's no reason that you're not you're not filing your own taxes and, and you're not writing stuff off. Where you can actually put yourself in that tax bracket to qualify for free health care. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, you know, like, I mean, and, and that's, and we're talking about, you know, like, that's across the board for anybody like working at Uber, anything like that. You can control a lot of, you know, now, now if you want to get a loan for a house, <laughs> you know, you might have to, you might have to give up your insurance, but, <laughs> um, you know, it, for people who are, yeah. who are, going and struggling and trying to figure this shit out and especially trying to get health insurance there's ways of doing that and you can have a job at real brave audio or target even and if you're a contractor and and and, you know like you can write shit off so to make sure you take advantage of these tax laws that people do on every level billionaires are doing this on a, a crazy level that you can't even imagine so it's like for people to understand uh, uh, how their money works for them is such a huge part of this business because music is wonderful, but it's also a business. It's not just like, hey, I'm going to go rock out and bang chicks and do drugs. It's like, I got to book this shit. I got to manage this money. I got to make sure I'm paying the taxes that I owe because you don't want to be in debt to the IRS. But No, you don't. Um, no, that's, that's a big no-no. But, you definitely don't want that. <laughs> I, I mean, you know... It, these are all things that if you are a musician working in that, that, that set of, you know, if you are a musician working as a private contractor, you should be taking advantage of all the, the, the things that are available to you. Um, so, uh, yeah, real brave audio.com guys. I'm going to drop all the links in the chat for you guys to go and follow Daniel here. Um, come on, stupid. Not you, me. Um, there you go. I dropped in chat. And if you're listening on the audio end, make sure you go into the show notes and click on the links available is realbraveaudio.com, Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff. You do other things too, right? Like you do like business. Um, what is it? Business, not business management. What, what do you do? Like you do like um, teach people. Yeah, like business development. Yeah. yeah I mean, thank I can you. help uh, coaching. I've, I've done that before. Mm-hmm. Um, Right now, my focus is on our YouTube channel. Oh. Um, tremendous amount of work. Uh, I'm, assu- I'm assuming you know what I'm talking about to build a YouTube channel. Oh, Real yeah. Brave. Um, it's uh, youtube.com slash Real Brave Inc. Oh, Real Brave And uh, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life is to build a social presence. It is tough. It's hard work. That's why I look like this. <laughs> I look like shit. I'm looking at myself right now, man. I look fuzzy and white. <laughs> you look like you've been working, brother. You look like you've yeah, been working. Man, but, it, but it's feel- cool. Like this is here's the thing, man. If you want to fucking make it, you want your dreams to come true, you gotta look like Daniel, all right? You gotta know that fucking that it's not just like I'm gonna go put something on Instagram and all of a sudden I'm gonna have millions of dollars. It's like it's it's putting your life, your blood, your soul into something that you absolutely believe in, and and and, and staying consistent, right? Staying oh, consistent. This is power, my friend. Yeah, I and agree with that. 
Huge. with with the online thing. So yeah, I mean, like yeah, I have the personal stuff, the personal brand. Like I do a lot of uh, social tweets and get my LinkedIn and all that. It's 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 a long term vision for that, just to kind of do courses and whatnot. Short term is to yeah, there it is, Sorry. right there. I gotta fix this, but here we go. Yeah, there it is. Uh, it looks way better than me on the screen, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, we can... oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Oh, that's a great. It was a really good close up of your face. Yeah, everybody wants to see. Oh God, I'm back. There he is. There he is. But yeah, well, and here's the thing: you you got three hundred, uh, three thousand, uh, you know, over three thousand subs, which is not easy. And you're just saying that this is not easy to do. Um, I I know that from experience. I I have I think I have like four point five thousand subs, but it's been years of an investment of time right. and effort so and i don't think people realize like this is not an overnight thing like that one video the led zeppelin video i was psyched for that video and it got it actually has 400 views i don't know why it's saying 233 oh. but that thing took seven hours to edit an hour to film and um you know the research behind it because mm -hmm. it's it's all like true stuff about bands and there's a whole oh. movement there's a couple of really big accounts that do this and my theory behind this is let's let's build an audience mm -hmm. um if we had let's just shoot for the moon you know like a million subscribers one to two to three percent of those would be interested in buying lessons from us you know absolutely absolutely yeah. it's, it's totally doable we so we do our shorts have actually been doing better yeah um the shorts like are really easy for those out there that are looking to, to start like a YouTube channel. Shorts are a really great way to get into this stuff. Um, you can't just like sign in. You really got to produce it. But um, these, some of these videos have gotten 250,000 views, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. And um, uh, for whatever reason, there's a huge metal audience on YouTube. <laughs> Nobody would ever know that unless oh, yeah. you got on there. Math like people metal, arguing about Metallica is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> no, no, yeah, the 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 amount of nerdum that exists in the metal, math, especially math metal, is is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. People just love it. It's hip hop and metal. I see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, energy behind, and I do really well when I put stuff about the hip hop uh, hip hop community because the way that I I've sort of started growing my YouTube my socials was I started covering music news because. The podcast has always been let's talk to musicians, let's talk about whatever, and and you know have fun and just have a conversation. Um, but then it started to expand into uh, you know understanding the music industry and also you know what's going on into it. So like right now, we, like right before you came on, we're actually covering the New York Adult um, uh, Survivors Act which uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that or if you've been paying attention to the news lately, but there's been a lot of high-profile musicians and celebrities having sexual assault lawsuits, civil lawsuits brought against them in New York because of this adult uh, survivor's act. So, please. Yeah, it's that look-back period went over, yes. like, 20 years, right? That's oh. what they did, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah like, I think Axl Rose, right? It yes. wasn't he just... Yeah. Yeah, that one was pretty rough, too. We were... it's... Yeah, I mean, like... I've, I've known people that have that have been abused. Like I get why we're doing it. It's just like it's frustrating to hear that stuff. Like, I have a son, and we're scared for him a little bit. Yeah, he's a good kid, and like if, if he, I know somebody um, not too much older than him that has gotten accused. Uh, we want to take care of our young girls. We want to take care of all our women. But God damn it, man. I mean, sometimes you gotta let boys be boys, and it's like I, it's, it's it's like he's he's just being a kid, you know. We're scared for him sometimes, yeah. not in like a, like any like thing that he's done wrong, right? But in the sense that everybody's so sensitive. Oh, oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the no, we we should we should all over this cancel culture stuff. Um, okay. <laughs> that well, that's why we're on Kick. We were on Twitch. And Twitch is a very, very sensitive platform. Just so oh, is it really? It, they're just so fuck. They're just so soft over there, man. It's just you can't say anything that goes against the narrative without them trying to take you down. 
um, there's huge Twitch streamers who are super liberal, but like don't agree with, you know, and I'm not trying to make this a conversation point, but like they don't agree with trans women in women's sports, right? But they're all about trans movement. They're all about everything. But they said this one thing. And then their community gets attacked and then Twitch takes them down because they don't wow. agree with one thing. Every Everything else they agree with. But this one simple thing, which is not simple, it's very complicated. For the very complicated, yeah. It's very and, complicated. Um, <laughs> it's but, complicated because, and this is going to be probably the defining uh, subject of this current generation, which is censorship on social media. Yes. You know, and it's... Um, I'm as a center as you can possibly get on just about everything. And I want, you know, everyone to live a good life, mm. but how that's happening, I, it, I'm, it's not up for me to say Yeah, uh, censorship on social media platforms is a problem. You don't want hate speech, right. but you certainly, it's like, where does the, where do you draw the line is, is probably the, the operative question. And no one's answered that question correctly. Elon Musk has tried and he's gotten killed for it. <laughs> And he's done really stupid things. Yeah. So, like, obviously, um, you know, it's um, not for me to answer. That's for sure. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I feel like you were going in that direction where it's like, I mean, hate speech is defined by whoever is, you know, whoever is saying like, like whoever is offended or doesn't agree with what you just said. Right. Like, so. Yeah. I don't agree with you, so that's hate speech, or you know, like it, it, having difference of opinion is considered hate speech, and it, that to me is is just there's no de there's no way to really define it in a, in a way that's like I, I guess it's like I guess if you're like I want all black people to not have a place in this society or something like that, something very blatant. Yeah, well, that's, that's, the, that's that's definitely not something that is right. Inside. But I also think that. Um, darkness in the light of day right the the whole idea of shining a light on these assholes who speak this way it, it, you combat wrong thinking with you know with conversation and uh with with being able to communicate with people and as soon as you start eliminating communication between people is when you start building these extreme uh, these extremist sides, right? Extreme left, extreme right. And, and the more that you try to silence any side of it, the more people push towards the, the extreme side of the argument. And then all of a sudden you have people fucking in the streets of New York saying, gas the Jews. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, how did we get to that point where people are saying, you know, like, how is that so liberal? What is that liberal? Like, you're talking about murdering an entire... Uh, a class of people or not class but a whole you know a, a whole set of people so it's like where there's obviously a discourse needs to take place because we've built these echo chambers that's made people become so extreme and, and think that like people like like organizations like Hamas are the good guys I, I mean look I'm not trying to talk about that specifically but I am that is wild to me when you see young kids on TikTok talking about how right Bin Laden was. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's obviously yeah, something I, that needs to happen. Well, it's all disgusting. So mm. I, don't, I don't really agree with any of that stuff. But right, right. But, but the, I mean, go ahead. The please. bottom line with like stuff like what we try to do every day at the studio is to build character. Mm -hmm. And um, with, with, Something as simple as a self-esteem building uh, program, like at Real Brave, um, you know, we we look to build confidence, and and like a lot of that, it can be missing in today's society yeah. when it when it comes to um, students in schools, you know, not having the confidence, and and that's taking an instrument does build confidence. It it builds self-esteem. It builds uh, the the wherewithal and like the critical thinking wherewithal that you need in life. And believe it or not, online it is so effective in helping people learn. Um, if you like to learn online, that is, I'm blown away by it. Yeah. I really am. Like I've always been a, a self taught person when it comes to a lot of things. Uh, like I said, I didn't graduate college. But the bottom line is something like our online platform is necessary in this next age that we're coming into. 
mm-hmm. the next information age of AI and all that stuff, like learning an instrument, sitting at home, getting your brain to work is important and worth it, yeah. I should say. Yeah, man. Um, I, I agree. I agree. And you know what's interesting? I got to say, because, you know, a lot of kids, I'm sure you got a lot of kids on your platform. Um, but I, I just learned this today that my 10 year old son needs bifocals. Wow. And it's not just him. Apparently, before 2020, the doctor was just telling my wife, before 2020, you know, it was maybe once or twice a week. I had to, they had to be like, hey, your, your five year old needs bifocals. After 2020, she says it's like five a day now. And so there's really this epidemic of, of kids who are, uh, what's it called, over-focusing on small devices. It's really the small devices that are killing us. So it's just yeah, interesting. Right. Yeah, You know, we, we have to figure out how to navigate this online life without, you know, killing ourselves and, and destroying our children's eyes. So if you are a parent who wants to get your kid involved in online lessons, make sure they're on like a nice screen, at least a laptop. <laughs> We've seen it before, like, because we have an app for the video room. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go to uh, the iOS. It's on the iOS store. Mm-hmm. Over audio. And uh, it only works in the lessons. So if you try to download the app, it's not going to work. Gotcha. But anyway, uh, the people using their iPhones for lessons and you can only see like their nose. Um, <laughs> yeah, really just, work it's like, well. am I doing it right? Yeah, yeah. that looks good. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <Don't> do it. <laughs> <laughs> can you move your nose out of the screen? Um, okay. So, uh, I, I would I, I want to know about your life as a musician and you say you're not a musician anymore but I I feel like you know like once you're a musician you're always a musician especially if you're facilitating music to be taught I'd say that falls under musician um wh- when did where did all that come from when where did you start what was your instrument guitar oh. uh, and singing um maybe singing then guitar uh depends on how you look at it uh I, if there's one superpower that I have that requires very little effort is singing. <laughs> and, um, I was gifted that, you know, my mom is a great singer. My grandmother is incredible. Sing- is an incredible. She's 103. Wow. Um, Congrats, grandma. And that go grandma. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, it was an outlet for me to, to talk about, you know, to just sing songs and then i uh my guitar teacher at the time taught me how to write a song and that became a thing my parents divorced and i remember one of the things my dad really liked about um, my guitar playing was me writing songs Uh, i devoured my father's record collection and you know i was always singing like the beatles and the eagles all these like old classic songs and when i started writing my own tunes he gave me the and my mom gave me the kind of the confidence like a, that's another key word, right? right? To do this, and uh, was in a band in high school. Uh, you know that was fun, yeah. uh, just playing in front of people. And out of high school, I decided not to really concentrate on college. I decided to to play in a band, and I went hard at it, man, for like ten years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say, you, uh, I met my you... wife when I was twenty three, and I was traveling doing that. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, so you got married young. Yeah, I got married at twenty five. Wow, twenty. I, I got married in twenty six. Uh, right at twenty six, I I feel you. Uh, so what? How far did you get with the band? Like, where where were you? Were you playing? Uh, what kind of venues? What kind of markets? Um, were you guys? Did you guys, you know, put out music that was well received? How how did that go? Yeah, I don't I don't even know how to answer that. We were we did a played a ton in Manhattan. Mm. Um, we had a we quit our jobs in uh, 1998, uh-huh. and we started. We traveled. We moved to Rhode Island to. Um, we got this like record deal. It was very small. It fell apart very quickly, Sweet. and um, it didn't. It didn't really go anywhere. So we decided to just tour in New England. That didn't really go anywhere. I put out an album in, in 2000. Moved back home, and uh, 2001 actually, and. 9-11 happened so that that was a uh, that was hard the music was always great and it's probably the biggest heartbreak i think i had to, to realize like that that'll never be 
um, because I put my heart and soul into it. And um, but you know what? Years back, my friend who I, I was in a band with, he's like, "You should re-release all that stuff." And I and I told him, and I mean this. I'm like, I I was that brings me to such a dark place. I never want to go back there. Wow. Because that music was such a, a cry for help. It was like, a, you know, it was a, a time where I was using all of those music and lyrics to just get all that young, you know, energy out. Yeah. And to go back to that, I would want to feel that over again. And to feel that over again, I would it would be difficult because it's mm. very intense stuff. And it was like... The end was like a cross between uh, Jeff Buckley and Muse meets like U2. Oh, like cool. it was very, very like melodic, but like rocking and hard and like ballads. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, mean, yeah. I would never want to go back to it. If I did it, it would be on my own terms, like down the road. Yeah, I feel that. I feel. I. I mean, I have a, a similar thing, but I, I just like I. I didn't really start touring heavily until I was in my thirties, but that was only because I was an alcoholic like, throughout my twenties. <laughs> fucking. Well, that's just, the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. The partying. Yes. Like the hard drinking, <sighs> like the debauchery in the in the uh, the bars, and like it's just like it was. It's so. It's like you look back at it, and it was like a lot of fun, yeah. but it's it it's dark. You know, it's not. <laughs> healthy yeah <laughs> no it's not it's not healthy to to live in a van with a bunch of dudes and then sleeping rarely and eating like shit and yeah. and driving fucking 15 hours to the venue and then have to set up and play and then set down tear down and then have to make it to the next show by the next day it, it's just it's not a healthy lifestyle especially if you're an independent artist which i assume that's what you guys were doing is independent artists yeah, right, travel right. around sniffing each other's farts in the van so it's like yeah. it's not a it's it, it's a rough fucking ticket man and, and to make none or be in debt or or to make like you know a 100 bucks after you know a few weeks of work or something it's yeah a, I, it's a, i want nothing to do with that <laughs> and i also want nothing to do with moving equipment i had to move a, i had to move a speaker from my house to, to my office yeah and I took it out of my, I was like, oh man, I had to walk back to my car. I, I pick up the speaker. It's like a thousand pounds. You know, it's like a, an old monitor yeah. and I'm bringing it to the studio. And I'm like, I hate this. I hate moving equipment. I, it's, and the other thing I hated, I, I never liked about playing was um, something always went wrong. And I have this, this theory that there's a uh, wire gremlins that exist. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm serious, man. They exist. Because even when we do the podcast, because we have a pot, you know, that's the part of the YouTube channel. Mm. Um, something always goes wrong. And it's always a wire. Yeah. It's always a wire. Yeah. So in the middle of the night, you know, we'll set everything up and then we get back the next day and, the, and then you check one of the wires and it doesn't work. You throw it out. It's the wire gremlins. You know, the wire fucking gremlins. They're just out to fucking ruin your gig. Worst. Uh, no, it, it's so true. You're just... It, <sighs> Or, or, or like showing up at a venue and they don't have a fucking uh, a PA or something, just like any oh. kind of weird shit or a flat tire or or just lifting equipment, unloading a van at like three thirty in the morning when it's yeah. negative twenty degrees wind sh wind chill. It's like no, no, no. We, yeah, we played CBGBs right at the end. That it was oh. like a Sunday night oh. at like eleven o'clock, and my mom was there. <laughs> You know, it's like, and she was the only one that was there. And you know how embarrassing that is? <laughs> that sounds pretty punk rock to me, you baby. You guys played Chibis? Yeah, man, it was great. <laughs> oh, that's it. And that's indie as it gets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what what started the change from, like, a being a, you know, working musician to... Uh, you know, start, I mean, cause being a working musician is entrepreneur, but, but what started like you looking into other uh, avenues for money and, and start, you know, on your journey to starting your own businesses. I worked the day jobs. Mm -hmm. I had all the terrible bosses, all of them. Yes. And um, I just had it about 2003. I was like, never again. Wow. So I started teaching yeah. and through that, I bought um, some recording equipment and we record people in, in my apartment. 
and I just decided, I said to my wife, who was very supportive, I said, I want to do this. You know, we had a baby on the way. Like, Why not start a business? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it worked. You know, my mom supported us a little bit too. It helped in the beginning. We moved back into our house. And while Ava was growing up, we were there for two years and the business took off like wow. in the beginning. Like I work seven days a week, but the, the idea was why not teach and make a living out of it? Uh, it seemed like a viable business model. And um, on the side, I was recording tons of hip hop artists. I never want to record hip hop ever again. <laughs> um, no, no, I love hip hop, yeah. but I never want to do that again. There's a couple of times I feared for my life because I was like surrounded with people that like one guy was like, oh, man, I just got out of jail. I was like, awesome. Sick. <laughs> my daughter's downstairs. Awesome. Yeah. I was just, well, we were in the I had rented a right, studio. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then even like some of the bands that were coming in, like they they weren't great either. Like right. They would run out and not pay me. Um, it, it was it was tough going in the beginning. And I remember the day it was 2008. Uh, my second child was just born and I, I called my wife Melissa and I was like listen I'm going to close the the recording part and just concentrate on the lessons mm -hmm. and that, that's when the business started going like that because mm -hmm. we had um you know a program and a viable business model you know recording all night I'm sure you know this mm -hmm. sucks yeah it's not, I don't like yeah. it at all I don't want to do that ever again <laughs> either um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, because it sounds great, right? Oh, you got your own studio, you know, like you're everybody's coming in, they're recording the shitty music. Yeah. I'm just kidding everybody. It's your no. music's great. No, your music sucks. Uh <laughs> we needed the money. Uh but no, it, it's a I, I, I absolutely know what that is. I, I had the same sort of setup in San Diego. I had my own studio. My son was there. I actually ended up getting fired from my day job right as our son was just born and coming home to tell your wife you just got fired <laughs> from your day job yes. um, and now we have nothing and now we got to figure it out and rent's due and we live in san diego three blocks from the beach so we got shit to do we break out the equipment we had yard sales but it was sort of a, a fire that was lit under my ass to start you know really uh working and and doing yeah. doing what i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing so um yeah i mean sometimes you just need a fire lit under your ass but yeah i i understand that whole like recording thing and and i, I still write for people and i just got out of this project that i absolutely couldn't stand and i told my wife i'm not doing this anymore I'm, i refuse to do this i was doing a christian music which i have nothing against christians or christian music um it's just not my thing and it was a cool learning experience but I also, every time I did it, it was just like such a drag and such a, like you just, it's just such a draining, um, it was such a draining project and, and I'm just so glad. Now I'm working with a, a friend who I love and I love the music and I don't mind producing and engineering this and, and yeah. doing it because it's fun for me. I, I, you know, I'm done with fucking doing stuff that I don't like doing for money i'm done being a whore i, I don't want to yeah. do that i don't like yeah. i don't pro, i don't like being a prostitute like that so yeah it took yeah, me a I, while to figure that out but it seems like I, I you figured you it out that. quickly <laughs> it, it took a long time for me to figure that out but yeah. like now if people ask me you know they see there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the business that are it's really super stressful um but the bottom line is, uh, I love what I do. Yeah. I, there are moments when I'm like, I can't believe I get to do this for a living. And then there's other moments where I, I just want to jump out a window. But <laughs> there's, but the, but there's way more times where I'm just like, I cannot believe, you know, yeah. that I get to do this every single day. And I'm very grateful. I mean, like I get very emotional about it because I'm I'm just you know. Growing up in Flushing, New York, and in a small house, and you know, my parents are working class people. Never could I have ever dreamed of being able to, you know, have sixty some odd employees that believe in what we do and um, have values that people understand. Like, have somebody interview me on a podcast that seems seems interested in what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So it's, it's, 
it's it's cool the, the the backstory is cool it was necessary and i always say this uh but you know real brave is the best song i've ever written oh look at that let's go oh no i, I missed it i was trying to give you the air horn but i oh uh, yeah you should have. there you go uh you blew it <laughs> <laughs> we did well i got something else for you hold on I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. Thank you, Alex. Uh, anyway, yeah, that guy. <laughs> that guy. Lunatic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he is out of his mind. Um, dude, uh, I, Daniel, I really appreciate talking to you. I, I you know, like, I, I'm sure you have mounds and mounds of work to get to and, and to get done before you get to go home and be with your family. So why don't we, why don't we end this here? And uh, I, I've been asking this as the last question, and sometimes this stuff bothers me when I hear a podcast like, this is our big last question, but I think it's always fun, this question. What is the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Oh, yeah, I uh, know. The, it, it's, the, best it's piece, the best piece of advice I've ever gotten? Yes. Oh, man, I don't know. I wasn't prepared for that one. I know. I know. Well, I don't know if it was ever advice, but um, having finding a mentor or two, in my case, a few uh, that you can confide to, and uh, it is probably the most valuable thing you can have in your life. Wow. And if you don't have a mentor in your life, meaning someone who you can listen to and just be like in awe of what that person is saying, um, inspire you to do and think differently. Uh, a mentor that is not only pushing you to be a better person, but wants you to be a better person too like believes and maybe even loves you oh. you know so i i think that that is definitely fundamentally the the cornerstone of my success is yeah a couple of mentors but you know love and family too i would say oh, having yeah. that background <sighs> That was huge. God bless the ladies in our lives, right? I mean, yeah. they've gone uh, just sticking with the journey. Um, yeah, family is huge. Uh, and, and I really like that, that the idea of a mentor. I mean, because you want to be around people who you perceive to be more successful than you. Um, and that goes on with, with music as well. Like, if you want to be a better jazz musician, go to the jazz club and go and play with people who are better than you. Get involved in people that can do it. Take lessons at Real Brave Audio and, and, and expand yeah. those chops, baby. Um, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on, everybody. Go check out Real Brave Audio. I'm dropping it in the link. I'm dropping the links in the um, chat. And also, if you're listening on the audio end, make sure you go into the show notes. Click on the links. If you're interested in any lessons, make sure you go to realbraveaudio.com. Daniel Power, thank you very much, my friend. And uh, you have a great rest of your day, sir. You too, my man. It's really nice to meet you and meet you and uh, keep up the good work here on the show. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it, man. All right, guys, everybody give a round of applause. Daniel Powers Jr. Thanks, Daniel. Fresh. Yes, sir. There goes Daniel Powers. There goes Daniel Powers. There goes Daniel Powers.